Salute is a program for and about men and women who have served our country. Our program includes news about the laws that affect veterans, information on benefits and services, and news from veterans organizations. And now, our host, Bob Peters. Hello and welcome to Salute. I'm your host, Bob Peters, and with me are two gentlemen who were in the Army, Brian O'Connell and Don, you gotta help me out with this one. Van Alstein. Van Alstein, okay. Uh, welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you very much. And Thank uh, you. why don't you give us a little bit, I, I know uh, you're not from England. No, I'm from Boston. <laughs> I'm from Boston. Tell, close, close. Tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, Brian. Uh, well, I, I was in the uh, 82nd Airborne back in 65, and uh, from there uh, I was transferred to 101st in 1967, uh, where they sent me to Vietnam. I was there during the uh, Tet Offensive, and uh, in May 68, we moved up to Phu Bai, which is just above Da Nang, near the Asia Valley and stuff, and uh, I was down in Song Bay also, which is uh, where the Michelin rubber plantation is, and uh, we, we pulled out of there also, and uh, we all ended up at Camp Eagle up in the uh, Ashaw Valley. So, so you, did, you, uh, did you enlist or you, were you drafted? Oh, I, was, I was enlisted. You enlisted. You, I was you enlisted. were a career military, right? No, 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 I wasn't. How many years? I was here three years. Three years? Well, I thank you for your service. What did you do after you got out? I was a truck driver for Mobile Oil Corporation. Oh, yeah? Gasoline tanker. So now, now you're uh, retired I'm retired. I live here, here in Leesburg. And I, I also joined the uh, 82nd Airborne uh, Association up in Massachusetts where I was the uh, vice commander of uh, the Gavin chapter of the 82nd Association. And uh, when I moved down here, I became... Uh, associated with the North Central uh, Florida chapter of the 82nd Association. That's where you met this guy. Uh, no, I met him at uh, one of the... Uh, uh, Conventions? The convention we had in uh, Harrisburg, PA, about five, six years ago, and we just hit it off. We had a good time. <coughs> so uh, you live here, right? I do now, yes. Uh, I've been probably out of Snowbirds for about five years, and I've been here permanently for about five years. Uh, having lost my first wife about 12 years ago, I came down here just to get away from up north. Change, yeah. And uh, my, her brother-in-law, my current wife's brother-in-law, was a former commander of mine in the military. So I came down to visit him. And while I was down here, uh, a hurricane was in, uh, just about to happen. And his wife says, well, we can't stay in our house because it was, it was a uh, wooden structure. She says, but my sister has a home in Donellan. We'll go up and stay with her for a couple of days. Well, that gal in Donellan, her sister, happens to be my current wife. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was doing real good, um, dating and not getting too serious. So one day she said, uh, come out for the weekend, bring the dog. And that's when I should have run. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, about four years after I met her, we, we married, and uh, we married in Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, at the Grand Ole Opry and the General Jackson uh, boat ride. Had a great time up there, and, uh, and we went back this year to celebrate our fifth wedding anniversary. Well, good do, for you. Doing the same thing. Congratulations. Yeah. So tell me, Don, a little bit about yourself. You're, from, you're originally from New York, you said. Right? Yeah, I'm originally from Watertown, New York. Graduated from Watertown High School. And at 17, I uh, and a bunch of us uh, joined the Naval Reserve. We uh, got our parents, kind of parents, into signing for us to join the Naval Reserve, still in the high school, but by wearing the white hats and the pea coats to school, we were very popular with the girls. Oh. Yeah, but so I had visions of uh, graduating in 1948, was when I did graduate. And uh, with thoughts of going into the Navy, having been exposed to that through the reserve program, and going into submarines. Well, I had a good friend who graduated high school with me by the name of um, Melvin Nagan, Corky. And uh, he was going into the paratroops where several of our other buddies had. And uh, he, But he wanted to enlist immediately after graduation and I convinced him that we probably should take the summer off and go in in the fall 
And uh, he agreed to that, but I had to go into paratroops with him, and that's how I ended up in the paratroops. I enlisted. Uh, and in order to get to the paratroops, you had to enlist because you had to go on a three-year enlistment. And uh, I wanted to go to Sendai, Japan, where the 11th Airborne was, was t stationed. And uh, they said, you can't do that. You're going to have to take airborne on a sign, and, which I did. And I ended up with the 82nd Airborne. And uh, I spent uh, three years with the 82nd Airborne. And uh, in 1951, I believe it was, uh, the 18th Airborne Corps was reactivated to become the command structure for all of the airborne units. And uh, for purposes of promotion, I transferred from the 82nd up to 18th Airborne Corps. And, and through a few uh, incidents over which I had no control, I uh, was reduced back to private. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those things happen. Yeah, those things happen. But anyway, it, it didn't really affect my career because uh, uh, once I got off active duty, I went into the active reserve program, spent close to 32 years in the reserve program, and retired as a first sergeant. And, uh, oh, good for you. Yeah. Good and for you. during that period, I had a lot of experiences at, at uh, various military installations throughout the United States and in Germany. And uh, I taught nuclear uh, nuclear biological chemical defense for about seven years at various installations and through wow. National Guard programs and reserve programs. And I enjoyed uh, so much of it and uh, my wife hated it until the checks started coming in. <laughs> but as a, uh, uh, as a reserve retiree, I hold full military uh, benefits. I have TRICARE for life. I uh, have access to all military facilities and uh, and uh, if I hadn't had to get out when I turned 60, I think I'd still be there because I really loved it. Yeah. And, uh, For those of our guests who are not uh, career military, the TRICARE is the medical. That's correct. For, the, for, for retirees. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it's used in conjunction with the uh, tr Medicare program. You have to have Medicare in order to get TRICARE. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is uh, for retirees. Uh, my wife and I have both access to all uh, medical and hospital installations and, and physicians uh, without charge other than our Medicare. Uh, uh, so, and I've had, I have so. had more than uh, 20 surgeries over my, since I went out of the program. Uh, I have some severe back problems and, uh, uh, and, and other areas. Basically, uh, I file a claim with the VA so that I give you access not to, not to compensation, but to their staff. I'm looking for because all of the neurosurgeons and local doctors I've gone to have not, not able to control or to determine what's causing the severe back pain that I've had. I've had fusions, I had a spinal cord stimulator implant, which had to be wow. eventually had to be removed. And then I had where the generator in my back was implanted, they, uh, they took it out, it was filling with blood, so they had to go back in and, and do some work on that. So I'm still, in, still having that severe pain. And, mm. uh, so we filed some claims of the VA based on parachuting, and uh, rather I'll see anything within my lifetime, I don't know. I'm 82 years old now, and, uh, and uh, I'm very fortunate that I've lived this long. And as my wife says, if I eat this, I'll live two more years. And I told her, well, if I have to eat that, I don't want two more years. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> but, <laughs> In our, in our my you activity, you were going to celebrate five years, right? We did. We, oh, saw, you, you, we, we did celebrated our fifth wedding anniversary. Yeah. Yes, we did. We went back to Nashville, went back into General Jackson, went to the Orlando Opry, and as we did when we first got married, that was great. We got married in shorts and golf shirts, and uh, and no one knew we were there. But uh, and some of the programs anyway, it within specifically within the reserve program, uh, we support. Well, first of all, I hold national office within the 82nd Airborne Association. I'm a national director. Yeah, this uh, is what this is what you guys wanted to come here and talk about, and I, I want you to get into it. Uh, you know everything that they do. Uh, so it's, it's the 82nd Airborne, and you are the. Uh, I am a national director. National director. Yes. Okay. Um, we have uh, uh, currently veteran directors, as I'm referred to. Uh, I think 12, and we have uh, six of uh, the active military from the 82nd Airborne Division that are directors, most of them are uh, active duty command sergeant majors. Mm -hmm. We have an executive director who is kind of our boss and we have an association president. Uh, the structure is uh, 
uh, over 100 chapters throughout the United States, including Hawaii. And the, um, we have about 35,000 members nationwide. Uh, and basically, it was started in 1944, just before the invasion of Normandy, uh, by those people who were involved in that. And it was, were for more or less a, a social organization that after the war they would have some place to get together and discuss what happened to them and how it happened and uh, comradeship uh, about what they were doing. And uh, over the years it's become much more than just an organization, it's a brotherhood. Uh, as he knows that uh, if I'm in trouble, this gentleman and everybody that knows me would come to my assistance uh, as, a, as a former paratrooper. Um, we have a lot of programs within the association. We have a Wounded Warriors program. We have a, a, the Educational Fund where we provide scholarships for dependent children of uh, veterans. We have, and during the Wounded Warrior program, we have um, programs where we bring uh, many of the Wounded Warriors to our annual conventions. Uh, we have a program in Orlando where we put them up in a hotel and uh, they go to Disney with their family. Uh, in another chapter, they have uh, a situation where they have a, uh, a gal who will line them up with fishing boats and, the, they, and their families can go out for days fishing uh, as Wounded Warriors. And, uh, and anything that these guys need physically, uh, they can't get through the military, we try to find a way to get it for them. Uh, it is something in my life that I, I, I really enjoy. Um, it gives me purpose at my age particularly to still be able to do these things and know that I'm accomplishing something for people like myself and someone else, you know, similar situations. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that's kind of the way I was raised when my mother and father raised me. You're here to make a difference. It's not about you. That's correct. It's about somebody else and whatever we can do. There are a lot of great organizations going around. They sure are. Doing some good stuff and... Uh, Speaking of 82nd Airborne, I gotta give a shout out to yeah. Howard. Yeah. He, he, he said to say hello, by the way. Yeah. Um, I mentioned to you in our conversations before this taping that we have a program in association with the Belt Charity, um, Belt Department Stores. Uh, they have twice a year uh, an annual charity program where uh, organizations like ours and other charities, church organizations, uh, all kinds of them are allowed to participate and uh, coupons of this type are presented to customers who are coming to the store and they donate $5 to us for one of these coupons and when they go into the store and make purchases, that $5 is reimbursed to that customer. So they're making a donation to the chapters uh, without costing them anything. That money goes into what we call our charity fund. We support Woody Warrior programs for guys who are going to the annual convention. We support the uh, New York, the uh, Educational Fund. We support the uh, uh, all of the various programs that the association has, including the Fisher House. The Fisher House being uh, an establishment. There's more of them around the country now than there ever was. That it's like the uh, McDonald Home for dependent children that are recovering. Uh, for us, it, the Fisher House is for families of the dependent, of uh, the wounded warriors who are recovering from their war wounds. Uh, so we have a lot of programs, um, some that uh, I'm not involved in, but I know that there's a lot of other ones going on. And, uh, and it, everything that we do is to benefit members of our association and even outside of our association if the need is there. You uh, do you have meet you have meetings? Are we do. We have a meeting at our chapter. We meet at the uh, VFW uh, on four forty one, which is just past the Market of Marion, going north be before you get, it, before you get into Bellevue, right? Right. And it is the second Saturday of each month at one o'clock in the afternoon. We'll be having one this Saturday, and uh, the only time we don't have meetings is June, July, and August, and that's because a lot of our snowbirds go home for that period of time. Within our chapter, we have uh, an annual picnic. We have an annual Christmas party that we're in the process of promoting right now that we're getting together. We have entertainment. We have a lovely sit-down dinner. And, uh, and it's not only just for the benefit 
of the members. It's social hour also, social times for where we get together with other families and uh, uh, meet at our own homes or at someone else's home. Uh, we're always interested in getting members to come and join our chapter. And in order to do so, anyone who has previously, regardless of service, or regardless of what country or what branch of service, if you are parachute or glider qualified, you're eligible to join the 82nd Airborne Association. Uh, we have a veterans membership and we have uh, life memberships. And the veteran memberships is an annual membership dues and life membership is a one-time payment and you're paid for the rest of your life. And, uh, and you get to meet a lot of your good friends. You meet people sometimes that you have not seen since you got out of the military. Mm. And uh, of course, like I said, when we go to the annual conventions, uh, the most popular place is a hospitality room uh, where uh, adult beverages are sometimes served. Uh, snacks. <laughs> <laughs> snacks. Hey, <it> was like <laughs> My uncle was in the Army. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it gives you an opportunity to talk to guys and discuss things that happen to you and to them. And, and it gets to that point, well, maybe can you top this? You know? Yeah. 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 But, a, lot, uh, a lot of times they have. A lot of times. They'll, they'll, they'll have a lot of programs. They'll have uh, parachute jumps from the Golden Knights. Uh, and they have a lot going on at the time at all these conventions. And it's a good time for everybody. You know, it brings back memories and camaraderie. Yeah that we have uh, when we do go to these conventions. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't understand that, you know, in the veterans community, there's ties. You know, we all, once, once you're yeah. a veteran, you know, you're automatically like, like if you were in the same college together. Yeah, you know, exactly. That's, that's what, you know, like a lot of people say, well, I went to, and I graduated from this college, and I belong to, you know, well, we're a brotherhood of men and women, you know, that right. have served our country, yeah. so. But it brings back memories yeah. when you, do you have, see. Have you ever, uh, Got in contact with any of the guys you were in with, or uh, the only one I, I keep in contact all the time with is my friend uh, Ski up in Massachusetts, and uh, I met him on the duffel bag when we were going to Repo Depot for the 82nd Airborne, and we've been friends ever since. And it was a funny story that uh, he went in '68, uh, '67. He went to the 173rd Airborne. And I was laughing at him. I says, "Oh, you going to Nam and everything." And uh, he, he went in early February, and uh, in May, I was going over to Nam with the 101st because mm. I was a replacement for uh, uh, the men that got in the, fight, the firefight over there with the uh, uh, Doc Toe and stuff, both 173rd and 101st. So I was going over as a replacement and stuff. And, uh, and uh, when I first got in country, we went downtown and Benoit and stuff, and I went into a Rosie's bar. Of course, there's always a Rosie's bar. Yeah. Rosie's course. very yeah. popular name. Uh, <laughs> Korea, Vietnam, anywhere. Oh, yeah. And, 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 uh, uh, yeah, she was popular girl. Yeah. And uh, I went in there, and I'm laughing, having a couple of drinks. And uh, my friend, he says, I don't know that laugh. And, and he comes out, and he's got his 173rd shirt on. He says, he sees me in country now. 2,000 miles away, we meeting again in the combat zone, and uh, it was yeah. just funny, and we've just been friends ever since, mm -hmm. and we, our kids grew up together, and, you know, we, we've been buddies ever since, so yeah. that's how we keep close, and, you know, we belong to the 82nd together and stuff, and, uh, you know, it's really a, a, it's a good, good organization, and it uh, brings back memories, and we talk amongst ourselves and stuff, and, uh, because we're both veterans, and usually it's tough to say, but most veterans, we 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 tell our own stories about the war and stuff. It's it's tough to talk about it to other people that didn't serve over there or didn't know the times yeah. we had and the tough times we've had. Yeah. About four years ago, uh, I was chairman of the local chapter, and my vice chairman, who was quite ill, he had a heart problem. And uh, before he passed away, he asked his wife that when he did, he wanted to be cremated and asked that his ashes be spread under canopy. Well, within our chapter, we had a former Golden Knight by the name of, uh, uh, yeah, Ron Smith. And Ronnie had a bag made up for his arm, made out of Velcro, for the ashes. 
and uh, we put that day, we all got together, we put 20 guys in the air. And now I had not been in an airplane or out of an ex the exit of an airplane in about 25 years. And having jumped at uh, various uh, military levels, which is about 1,200 feet, we went up to 14,000 that day. And wow. we delayed, it was a tandem jump. They wouldn't let me go solo because of our age and then I having experience. <clears throat> we went out at 14,000 and we delayed down to eight. And at 8,000, he released the, uh, the ashes. And it was not a cloud in the sky. And yet when those ashes come out, it was the most beautiful white cloud you've ever seen. Yeah. We had about 40 people on the ground clapping, crying, uh, applauding. Uh, we had three photographers go down with us, taking photographs all the way, uh, you know, candid camera photographs and uh, videos. And it was just very emotional, but it was one of the most beautiful sights I think you would ever see in your life. And, and you know, uh, he guy been happy says, with it. The right? guy said, someday, Don, we'll do that for you. And I said, well, if you do that for me, you're going to need some help because my whole body's going out. <laughs> 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 You're not cremating me, buddy. <laughs> that won't be a tandem, I'll tell you. <laughs> now, for somebody, because we're going to be out of time before you know it, but there's uh, somebody who uh, qualifies, which, like you said, they had to be in the 82nd, right? Well, not necessarily, no. They could be any branch of service or from any country, Russian, oh, yeah. German, Marines. Italian, as long as they were parachute or a glider qualified and can prove it. You'd need a copy of your DD-14 or a certificate of, a, of a, uh, st stating that you were qualified. So they could come to your meetings, right? And Absolutely. With the DD-214, you would gladly sign them up. And you meet again uh, where? Uh, at the VFW, the Bellevue, 441, yeah. going north, just past the Mark of the Marion, very next building. Okay. And uh, we hire ladies are always there, a good number of our ladies who put on a little feast for us after the meetings, and that we take good care of them, and, and they some, take good care of us. Somebody wants to talk about it, they can call you, right? Absolutely, my phone number is 352-307-6718. Also, the current chairman of the chapter is, is George Zablocki, who lives in the villages, and his phone number is 352-430-2722. We'd be very happy to talk to you, give you any information you needed. Uh, we invite you to come up to our meetings. Even if you don't want to, you're not interested in joining us, sit down with us and talk to us and see what goes on. Let's see what we're about. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, How about a website? You got a website? Uh, the 82nd we don't got have, an airport? The 82nd Airborne has a website, the association. And on the computer, you just put in 82nd Airborne Association, and the whole website comes up. Now, a lot of the individual chapters have websites, and they're all listed. But there's an annual bulletin that they can uh, they can get into and see what's happening at association level, all the activities, what uh, what is planned for conventions. We have what we call our Florida Days. Once a year, we have like a mini convention. Uh, we just had one, and it was up in Jacksonville. Next year, it's going to be in uh, uh, down in Lakeland, I believe. It's going to be through the Miami chapter. And uh, we get together, and we have a, a really good time. And again, get together. It's, there's a camaraderie of getting together with your buddies and talking about what you did and what's happening yeah, in your life. But you really do a lot to help <coughs> out the, the community, yeah, yeah, with the, the wounded warriors and all. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole premise is to assist those people who need help. And as the wounded warriors, and even if you're not a wounded warrior, if you remember the association or just somebody you know that can need assistance, we would go out of our way to help them. Very good, very good. What did, what did you do when you got out of, out of the service? Well, I uh, I became a uh, New York State Corrections officer and eventually retired. Is that as where you met him? Yeah, that's <laughs> where we met. <laughs> eventually retired as a sergeant. <laughs> and uh, uh, so between parachuting and, and uh, New York State Corrections, uh, my body's taken a beating. And uh, it's had some rock and roll. And uh, that's part of my, my problem in my back. But uh, basically, it was started long before I went with corrections. And, Mm -hmm. It's yeah. probably from parachuting. Parachuting, yeah. That, that hey, takes you know, a toll on you because it's like jumping well, out of a second-story window yeah. and landing, and a lot of times we come down hard. Well, before, uh, when I first started jumping, I was back in 1948 and early 49 at, at, uh, at uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, and then we went to uh, Bragg. The DZs, the drop zones at Bragg, were not plowed. 
and you had stumps and you had huge rocks and all kinds of obstructions on the dog zone. So a lot of guys were hurt, broken backs, broken legs, I broken arms. I would think arms. so, yeah. Yeah, we did. We had a lot of injuries, a lot of hard landings. And eventually, they plowed those and they stopped a lot of the guys getting hurt. Yeah, they sent them to the 101st. Yeah. Uh, probably <laughs> the worst. Go see Brian. Yeah, they, they, they were worse. Yeah. The worst problem I think that I had is uh, on one jump, I went out of the aircraft. And I got, somehow I got over the top of another jumper, lost the ear in my parachute, and went right through him. I went into his suspension lines, and I had suspension lines around my leg and my arm, and I'm laying in chute and kind of like this. And finally my chute went out to the side and reopened, and we came down together and made, we made a very difficult yeah. landing, a lot of hard landing. But uh, the medics were right there when we landed, and neither one of us had to need medical attention at the time. But, so. There was always a lot of... Uh... There was more injuries when we used to do night jumps. Yeah, that's Oh, I would think so, yeah. You, couldn't you, you, see, can't, you don't have a flashlight like this going yeah, on. Yeah, you couldn't see where you're landing. You, yeah. you just guesstimate <clears throat> yeah. when you're coming down, and sometimes you landed in the trees. Yeah. And and some that, of the, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but some of fine. the techniques that you were taught, one was how to get out of your chute if you're over water and over in the trees and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And a friend of mine, he made a night jump, and uh, he thought he was over water when this was the moon shining on a road. So he hit his quick release box, come out of his parachute about 20 feet off the ground because he thought he was going in the water and went down the road, broke both his ankles, and that was the end of his parachuting career. So. I guess, you know, I, I, I've used, I was a past commander of a Legion post up in Oxford, Connecticut, and a good friend of mine was with the 82nd, the Mr. Bill Baxter, greatest, one of the greatest guys I ever met. And, I used to tell them all the time, I never can understand why anybody jump out of a perfectly good airplane. You know something? I don't think there's anything that we would rather do. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm getting that sense from a lot of people. We're so proud of what we did and how we did it and, uh, and the appreciation we have for each other and, the, and, as I said earlier, the camaraderie and the brotherhood of being with people who did what you did. And it's a select group. Yep. It's are. not a big group, yeah. it's a select group, and it's only a certain amount of people. You have to have a mindset to do it, <coughs> because yeah. when you look down and you yeah. see nothing but air, you either have to step out or be pushed out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know anybody. There's only that. one way to go, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, gentlemen, I'm, you know, I'm afraid we're out of time. But any, once again, if anybody wanted to join the 82nd and they qualify, they can call you. Absolutely. Uh, and then the, the meetings, again, you talked about that. And I want to thank you both for coming on the show. I want to thank you for your service. And uh, Thank you. We'll be, we'll be talking to each other. We'll be seeing Good. each other around. I know where I can find you. Uh -huh. yes, to all our veterans out there, active military and their families, we salute you for all you do. Until yeah. next time. now entering our third year salute here at Lakefront TV. We've had many great guests and veterans organizations share their stories with us. We'd like to hear from you too. If you're a veteran or a veterans organization, Lake Sumner Counties, please give us a call. Lakefront TV can be seen all over Lake County and the villages and worldwide at lakefronttv.com.